Hi there, this is Art and Such, and today I'm going to do a re release of my Overwatch logo on the Rainbow Loom. Uh, I wasn't completely happy with the way the first model came out, so we're going to try this again. For this pattern, I'm uh, using the same colors orange, black, and white, and you're going to need a double loom with a total of six rows. This one's a little bit larger, but it will work either way. So I'm going to use uh, actually, I'll just start at the end here and use the first six rows. What you'll do is you'll come one away from the side and place two orange bands to the from the second to the third peg from the side. So just leave that first one blank for now. We'll repeat this again once to the next peg and one more time. And then take two bands again, still working with orange. And we're going to come down diagonally from that first peg you used to the second peg down on the, on the side. This whole project is symmetrical, so you will be always doing a mirror image on the opposite, opposite direction. On either side, come down with four sets of double black bands. I'm going to pick ones here that aren't too stretched out. Three and four. So, assuming you're using a standard double loom, this last row will be the last, or I'm sorry, this last peg here will be the furthest row of your loom. Now, the way that I'm doing this is I didn't, or the not the way, but the, the strategies I'm using are going to be the same as on the first model, but I've changed the colors up a little bit in terms of their placement. Um, hold on, I don't think we need quite that many. Let's take off... Oh, no, that is right. Okay, sorry, we're switching to white now. I was looking at the wrong, the wrong picture here in my diagram. On either side, we'll need three whites now, or three sets of double white. So take two at a time, and second set and third set, opposite side, one set of double downs, and two. I was in a panic there. I was almost going to have to restart this video. I'm glad I caught my mistake there and three. And then the next row or column over, so this is the second from the side, we'll start with two black bands, two sets of double black bands. I feel like um, I'm using my side. It's one set of two and two sets of two. And we need another two sets. Will actually be four. And the third row will have two sets of two. And the next one over will have two. As I said, this is symmetrical, so you'll see some patterns here as we go. I'm just working on filling in the middle now. And then another four sets on that fifth row in. On the second and fifth rows from the side, after those four sets of double black, we're going to put on three sets of double white.
and we will need two sets of double black bands underneath those white ones. <clears throat> from the side and here we're going to need three sets of double white bands sets of double black bands. finish with the first double layout here. We'll round this off, connect it with double white bands. So take two white bands and you're going to go to the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth peg down on that first row. Bring it down diagonally to your tenth peg down on the next row end. That's where you finish the last set. We'll repeat on the opposite side. And come in with double bands towards the center. So in from one side, in from the other side. And we'll put one more set of double bands right across those middle bottom two. Okay. Uh, right. Let's do a single, a single band across all of the rows. And we're going to go all the way up and I like to match my my holding band color with the outside bands. So here it's white. I'm using white. I'll do that again for the next one. It's finding a stretchy band here. And then I can see the one above. The one above has black and white so you could choose either. I think I'm going to use the white again. And this next one is definitely black, so I'll stretch out black and bring that across all of those. And the same for the next couple here. Let's find it. You know, it doesn't stand out or blend in, or, you know, it, it doesn't stand out as much as being off if it's matching. I'm going to use an orange one here. I love my black bands and they go too quickly and so I use this. I'll stretch out as few of them as I can here. Now we are gonna be doing a couple of chains for the side. I'm just having a really quick look. I can't remember. Um, I cannot remember whether I put a holding band on the last time I did this. We shouldn't really need one though. So we're gonna try without for the moment for the time being I'm thinking. Um, you're going to need your hook for the next part for the chain. I'm just having one last look here. I think we're going to be okay. We're going to leave that for now. So next up, grab your whites. We're going to be using quite a few. Take the hook, wrap one white onto your hook two times. And this is going to go onto two white bands. Stretch them. Place them together onto the end of your hook, open part facing up, slide over, pull it down, put the hook back through. And we will do this until we have a total of six sets on our chain. So that was one, this is two. And this is three. Put it on the end, push it over, bring it down, over. Uh, 
at the bottom of the chain. If you stretch it out a bit, you'll find there's a bit of a circular loop. We're going to put that onto the ninth peg down on the side. That's the last one that we put our bounds on, and we're going to stretch this all the way up to the second peg from the top. And what this will do is it'll give us a round extension, a round part on the side. Let's make sure I'm still on range of the camera here, and then we will. Yeah, we're good. Uh, and then we're going to grab a piece out of each section of, uh, of that chain bring it over on top. So hook it under some of these pieces, bring it over. We'll go a little bit faster when we do this for the other side. It just occurred to me my fancy new loom which is made for me and which I love is a kind of camouflaging the white. So I'm hoping this is still manageable for you. Let's make another one of these for the opposite side and we're going to do a single wrap it twice and put that onto six sets of double white bands here. That one's too stretchy. One. This is exactly the same as what we did on the first side. Two. thinking this should be seven because I was short a connecting piece there but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna go with this one two three four center here. We're going to stretch this out until we find that little circular loop. Put that on at the bottom. This is the opposite side from the first one I placed it on. And this didn't go on until it's... nope, that's, that is on. We're good. Stretch it up to that second peg from the top on the other side here. Take one part out of each bit of chain and bring it over. Yeah, we are a short one, but I'm okay with that. I think this will still be fine. We're gonna come back to the bottom and the rest of this is moving up. So, last time. Okay, take these off for a minute. Remove your whites and we're going to put those black pieces on top of the whites and that way if we have to turn this around it will still be okay. Take those black ones off just for a second. This is a really fast fix here. And, and then we're going to come... Right, these were coming in. So we're going to come back in, in. I had my like my first pattern design pictures layout, and then I changed it. And I didn't change it on the on the initial design pattern. I forgot that I had made this change. As I said, it's a really easy one to make. I've just taken the white pieces and put them on the bottom, and then we'll put the black pieces on the top. And then when we loop it, it'll be kind of hidden in there. I'm thinking now we might need that um, securing that after all. So let's put a single white one on the second or third. I'll do it the second one from the side. Twist it, wrap it around three or four times. We're going to reach under there, push back the whites and get those or sorry, the top white that you just put on and get the two blocks and bring them around and forward. And 
And then we're going to go back inside and get the next two and bring them over to the right. So I'm going to push back, scoop up the two that are coming from the next peg over. And scoop up the next two or the last two and bring those back to the left side. And I'm going to scoop up my black bands here from under the white that I just put on. That's on the fourth peg from the side. I'm afraid I'm losing one here. I'll have to re grab that again. Okay. And go to that fourth one in, push back and get the bottom two, bring them over to the right. Scoop up here blacks from that peg. We're going to come up diagonally. Go to the, I'm coming back to that first one on the side closest to me. Push back the two white loops on top and get the bottom two black. Bring those carefully around and up and over. And come inside one more time. Scoop up diagonally to the ninth peg down on the close side. Now if you're a pro loomer, you're pretty well ready to go. We're just going to be looping straight up. If you want to take your time to do this with me, that's cool too. I'm going to start, you can actually start on any of the central rows. I think I'm going to start the second one in. I'll push back the white holding band, take the bottom two blocks and bring them forward. Push back, take the next two whites and bring those forward. You want to make sure you're getting all the bands each time. So it's stuck on something. There we are. Now this, um, this loom seems to be working well for me, but if you have a, loom, a double loom such as the one you've probably heard me complain about in like every other video I've used it in, um, and yours doesn't do well under pressure, you can start to remove the bottom pieces once they've been secured in, like so. And if you want to do that as you go along just to reduce the stretching, that's that's fine as fine too. Okay, I uh, left off here with these two blocks. I'm gonna keep going. Hmm. A little trouble with this loom too, but still much nicer to work with than my old one. Okay, so I've come all the way up. I'm gonna go to the next one. This is the third row in now. You can see I'm holding the loom steady. I find that helps me because if it's flipping around, then it's hard to keep control over what I'm doing. Just trying to wiggle this free. Oh, doesn't want to wiggle. No wiggles today. And what happened there is it fell right off and went back through, so I reached under and used my hook to grab it again. And sometimes this takes moving the loom around or multiple tries or using your fingers, using a different kind of hook. It's all it's all a little bit of experimenting and finding out what works best for you in different circumstances. I'm going to go straight to the top and come back down for the next one. You're just going to keep looping right up. If you are this far along and you're wanting to move ahead, just jump to where I start on the sides because there's uh, it's a little, little bit different, but not by much. Just uh, want to make sure we we know what we're doing with the side extension piece. And I'll be with you there in just a minute. Okay, almost on this row. Let's call them. I get really confused with these because, I mean, technically, like a row is side to side and a column is up and down but because it's a grid it's and you oft, I often have it sideways like it's hard to 
really designate one section as up or down or side or side. Like the vertical to horizontal is a little bit hard to define. So it's taking me a long time because my bottom ones are sinking down and you have to get both of them, not just the top one. I feel like there, I only got one that time. So I'll go come back in, scoop it around from the side, make sure I have everything I need looped here. This is a new loom for me, as I say, and it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, I imagine, as with any new tool. Oh, that actually like hurt my arms. This is work. We are ready for the last two rows, and then we'll finish up at the top here. So I'm going to turn this this way, see if I can get a good view here. When you're looking at the side. There's a top row, and then there's this bottom row. And it's the bottom row we're going to be looping, but we have to reach under that top row, get the bottom and pull it up and through. So I'll give you the overhand view again. And what I sometimes like to do is pull those bottom ones to the side. And that way I can find them. They're easy to reach. They're easy to see. There's a little extra tension. So you know the, the bands that have a bit more resistance will be the right ones. Push back, reach under. Bottom two, I only got one, so I'll be reaching back in again in one second. There we are. One. Got a song stuck on my head. I've been listening to music today. I'm trying really hard not to tell my dad to while you're concentrating. Okay, a couple more on this side. And when you get to that second one, we want to reach in for those two diagonal oranges. Scoop those up, bring them to the second or the second peg in from the side on that top row. I'm gonna take a couple of these off. Just, um, I don't feel like it's harming the loom, but my bands are really, really tight here. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's do the other side. Guys, right, so I'm gonna get really caught up in taking the bands off. We'll have to do that all after anyway, but see this one doesn't want to come, so I'll pull it to the side. That will make it kind of stick out from the rest. Seems kind of sharp too. A little bit scratchy. That's alright. Let's hold them together pretty strong. Very sturdy. That is a good thing. Just keep working up, push back the holding band, get the bottom two, bring them forward. Take your time with this, just you want to really be sure that you're getting all of the bands. And last two more of these. So we're going to come in from either side, reach in, get the bottom two orange, bring them to the middle, bottom two orange, bring them to the middle, and you can decide whether you want to go to the left or the right on this next one, but either way, we want to oops, find to bring the last two over. I'm going to push back everything else here, which is on top, I'm having a hard time seeing Okay, so check that you have everything secure and if it, it's looking good, go to the last one that you put the band on. You'll poke your hook down, through, and out. Put an orange holding band on the bottom. 
I'm gonna add a little tension. Just having a hard time angling this. And when you come up, we want to turn the. This part is a lot harder to do in here. Turn the hook so that the open part is pointing up away from you. And then you can put the other side on and bring the first piece over the top of the hook. And this can be secured on a holding hook or you can just leave it on your finger as you remove this. This is generally safer to do from top to bottom. If you see anything coming loose as you go, try to grab it and stitch it back up while, while you still can. We're going to do this carefully so that nothing snaps. There's a lot of, a lot of bands, a lot of tension especially since we had to bring those holding bands across the full six rows. And cross your fingers for me that we got everything here. Taking this off top to bottom, outside to inside. It doesn't matter which side you start on. But this will make for a better release as a general rule. I remember when I started doing this and by the end of the project I'd just be so impatient I would rip things right off the loom. It's never, never any knowing how it would come off at that point. is your logo. You can pick the side you want for the front and we're going to put the, uh, the band, the holding band, the trimming band here onto a stick You can tuck that in on the back side if you choose. I think I want this to be my back side. So we'll slide it under a couple of bands here. And let's put this down for you to see. Actually, camera's further away. Now this is probably easier. And there we are. Now if you uh, want to do this again and reverse the colors, you can have the like the black for the white and the white for the black and that'll give you a similar result. Just uh, kind of inverse. So there you go. Overwatch logo. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.